Welcome everybody to Bugbears and Brews. My name is Brian and today we're doing a Tomb of Annihilation recap for encounter number nine. Sorry, I'm stumbling over myself here. Uh, I'm going to apologize if you hear Lammy singing in the background. My daughter uh, insisted on having it on tonight, so we might get it trickling in on the video. Uh, no number eight recap because I was sick last week and I already gave my players a written recap and uh, you know we've already played another session since then. Um, I know I've done double recaps before, but uh, this case, uh, not too worried about it. Um, so, start off with you guys heading back. Uh, you, you're taking the indirect route to Omu. Um, so, you're cutting across through the Aldani Basin, going south towards the pillar or peak of flame, and then west uh, to Omu. Um, so, heading into the jungle, like crossing over from the Aldani Basin, heading back into the jungle there. Uh, you guys did a little bit of traveling, and the first thing that really uh, of importance for the encounter was you heard fighting in the jungle, and you guys are like deep, deep wilderness stuff here, so hearing fighting was uh, not expected. Uh, it turned out that you saw a uh, orc or a half-orc fighting a, uh, what could best be described as a four-armed, six-limbed uh, gorilla. And this thing, uh, you know, the, the orc and this thing seem to be in a pretty good... Uh, block between which one was winning. But you guys decide, let's go ahead and help this orc out here. Uh, mainly because uh, while the orc was in this um, deadlock, the, the orc had some sort of comrade that was screaming and shouting and pleading for help. Uh, it was a uh, halfling that got ripped into all sorts of shreds and was dubbed the quarterling uh, after that. Um, but the party jumped in, started helping out, and you guys uh, you know, rushed in on this thing and did some pretty good damage to him, um, but you didn't do the check around and see what else is going on there. So when the second one snuck up and uh, started to try to go to town on some folks, that caused a little bit of worry, mainly because these things, while they don't hit incredibly hard, they do have five attacks and they have a pretty good attack bonus there. So uh, you, they got in quite a few hits. Um, Sai, I think, yeah, Sai went up and charged one of them. Uh, he was actually the first one in the melee range besides uh, the half-orc. Uh, he's the first one to help out the half-orc, I should say, in melee. Um, and then he double-backed and went to the one that kind of surprised people and came up on the casters. Uh, not because they were casters, but because they were softer, squishier-looking, uh, not armored, easier-looking targets. Uh, and so I went up and rushed in on these things while the casters retreated back. And that's when Sai got absolutely pummeled by one of these things and wound up getting dropped. Uh, so the first Grillion uh, got taken down. The second one was getting beat up pretty decently. Uh, but he took down Sai and it like booked off, carrying Sai with him, uh, heading up some trees. And I don't remember. I think it was one of the Cat's River or Flask. Uh, launched the arrow, lot off an arrow, and it wound up hitting the Grillion and killing it. And uh, luckily, because we were all worried that Sai was going to fall and take two deaths, you know, failed instant death saves due to hit taking damage, um, Barlow did a quick, uh, what's it called, feather fall and prevented um, Sai from hitting the ground and taking those uh, that damage there. Turns out the half-orc that was in combat there was a, uh, as our new player, Tim, um, a second Tim, Tim F. Uh, he, um, he, his character, uh, Oric, uh, Oric, 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 uh, I don't recall the correct pronunciation there, uh, half orc fighter, but he is also uh, sent to this area in Chalt from uh, Sin, uh, Slindra, and he was supposed to be in Port Nainzaru, like you guys were. Um, however, his group was just teleported there, and the only person that he saw from his group around there was a halfling. And couldn't see anybody else, and immediately those things started charging in. And so, uh, you know, her magic is, or not her magic, um, just talking with Auric and whatnot, and her behaviors and whatnot. A little bit um, more eccentric, a little bit more... Not quite right in the head there. Um, so the death curse is really starting to take a little bit of a toll on her. Uh, so she still has strong, powerful magic, but maybe not as accurate as it was previously. 
Uh, from there, you guys headed in further to your, uh, Nanglor was your next stop. So the main thing is you want to stop by Nanglor and try to find um, some sort of magical goodie to tempt, bribe, whatever you want to call a uh, red dragon further down the way that you guys are probably going to encounter, you believe you're going to encounter. So you want to have some sort of bribery going. And Nanglor is this uh, ruin that's not really been plundered that much, so there's a pretty good chance of you guys finding something good for bribing. Um, but as you were heading into Nanglor, uh, once again, you did the let's just cross without kind of taking a look around. And you guys cross over this uh, swamp area. You know, not really much issue until you get right near Nanglor where you guys are ambushed by a series of croc and let's see here Barlow got snapped up in the jaws and Uruk got snapped up in the jaws oh I should backtrack here Uruk um you guys agree that he could join you guys but he can't be on the charter yet until he takes care of uh, kills five beasts and then so he doesn't get any loot he has to kill five beasts and until he does he's not on the charter he doesn't get any shares of loot uh, and that was a much longer debate and discussion than we normally give uh, new players for joining the table. I think part of it was just to kind of razz Tim because this was his very first D&D &D game. Um, but you know, I think everybody had a lot of fun with the the talk there. Tim did really good staying in character there, um, talking a little smack to the elf, even though the elf is the one that helped him and that kind of crap there. Uh, so yeah, back into the the, uh, you know, getting hit up by the, the drag or not the dragons, <laughs> the crocodiles. Uh, Barlow got uh, snapped up in the jaws, uh, was able to eventually get free of the jaws thanks to Fitz tossing around um, Raven Feeblement, I think it was. Yeah, Raven Feeblement on the crocs, so that way Barlow had an advantage on the strength checks to get out. Um, sadly, the Raven Feeblement for... Uh, for orcs, Croc didn't make it, but uh, it got that killed pretty uh, easily. Um, Sai, I don't. Re re no, sorry, it wasn't Sai. Uh, it wasn't Barlow that got snatched up in the jaws. It was Sai. That's right, because uh, Barlow dodged and got didn't get snapped up, but uh, Sai did, and Sai was trapped in the jaws. The Raven Feeble came. He got out and um, did a glorious. Was it a nat twenty on that or something like that? And then wound up stabbing uh, down into the croc's mouth with another nat 20. So it was a really good series of events there. Um, you guys quickly went from like a, I don't want to say a dangerous footing, um, but not starting off the best to uh, a really quick turn of the tables thanks to those Raven Feeblements. Uh, just like, <coughs> sorry, just like with the uh, Grillion fight, the Raven Feeblements from uh, Fitz really helped. Um, I got to say, uh, it's kind of interesting to see how you guys hold on to your spell slots and whatnot. You know, um, certain people treat certain counters, I think, a little bit more serious, and certain people treat them as like, I'm just going to keep on fighting cantrip versus cantrip because I don't know when I'm going to need my spells, my precious spells. I'm not making fun of you guys at all, but it's just kind of interesting to see the difference in play style there. Uh, like, where Fitz is very free with his uh, spell slots, and then um, Aaron's normally pretty free as well, but uh, like, I know this bar, though, for the most part, tends to save his for emergency situations. So it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen as you guys get a little bit more spell slots. Uh, granted, you know, this is early level play, and you don't have a lot of spell slots, so that's a little uh, different there. But it's going to be interesting to see how it's going to turn out with you guys uh, having, you know, a little bit larger pool of resources as we go on there. Um, from there, you guys explored uh, a little bit of Nanglore. City's really crummy looking, uh, not crummy, beautiful looking, but like uh, really ran over with plant life, um, water all over the place, they have water damage and uh, little rivers kind of going through where they shouldn't be, that kind of stuff there. But there is all sorts of plant life that you've never seen before. Uh, looking around one of the upper plant life areas, um, just kind of taking a look around, seeing what all you can find. Uh, Flask. Flask has a little uh, Comedon kitten, and uh, so this Comedon kitten's out sniffing around, and one of the Chihuahua come up and run it, uh, not run, come up, hug it, and run away, and the uh, 
the kitten grew from a very small kitten to about the size of a house cat. And uh, along with the kitten growing, the snakes on its shoulders grew as well. So nobody's really excited with Flask to have this kitten now this uh, size of the house cat kind of hanging around. Especially because he was already showing signs of uh, the kitten kind of messing with him, having all these... Um, bald patches but not looking very inflamed and uh, obvious bite marks on them and that kind of stuff there um, guys also took a look at a little bit of background thanks to barlow having uh some research here and uh you know understanding old, old omuan language and was able to kind of tell you guys the story of it um kind of recapping here it's dedicated to one of the omuan queens um she was beloved by all. This is like the jewel of her town, you know, the jewel, you know, her crown jewel type situation here. And um, it was dedicated to her from one of her servants. Uh, you don't quite, you got the name of the servant, but you don't know what that servant, uh, who he is. I will say it's a he. Um, and it says, you know, there was a word that you couldn't make out. It was crossed out and then uh, really big, ugly, chiseling marks that said betrayed. So, uh, the story was, hey, you know, something he dedicated this to her, but then um, she put she somebody whoever put down um, damn cat whatever uh, put down that that person betrayed her. Uh, let's see here. From there, you guys uh, also back up on that terrace there, looking around. You guys ran across uh, a half dozen plant-like zombie guys so they were humans um but they had all these vines and whatnot growing in and out of them they acted very uh zombie-esque um and while they had a decent hit point pool you know like all zombies they, they don't put, pose a big threat if you can first off isolate them and then be kind of kiting them around so thanks once again uh fits doing like the crowd control situation wound up uh, using Turn on Dead with great efficiency. Uh, there was a little bit of debate when he was doing it whether or not these guys were plants or human or undead or what were they. In this case, we lucked out and they were actually undead. And once we dropped those guys, that's where we left off. Um, how I think everything played out, I really liked the Grillion fight. I liked uh, that, uh, you know, I was able to kind of sneak in the second gorilla there. I always planned on bringing it in after the first gorilla was ha at, you know, half health, um, just having a really high stealth roll and then you guys not bothering to look around and kind of set up this kind of two-party situation there that, uh, you know, was a lot of fun for me to kind of open up on some damage. Um, crock fight, I knew wasn't going to be anything substantial, but uh, just trying to keep, you know, keep you guys aware of situation, you know, uh, environmental awareness, that kind of stuff there. And uh, the plant zombie thing fight. I think um, having the six on you guys pretty early could have got a little messy. Uh, but thanks to the turn on dead, it hit, what, four out of the six of them. So you guys were able to uh, take out the two that were the immediate threat. And then from there, work them down one by one. And that ended up pretty quickly. A lot of fun. Uh, you know, looking forward to next week because we're not playing this week, uh, holiday week. We had five out of seven people that couldn't make it, so we're just going to say, you know what, let's cancel. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking because I'm still having a little bit of issues with my voice here every now and then, especially when I start talking for a long time. So I'm going to uh, slug some water uh, and listen to Lammy sing a little bit more because Lammy is amazing, right? Sorry if you can't hear that. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I'm going to do about it. Sorry. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.